This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's worship God together. So as we prepare for worship today, just a couple of things I want to, to remind you of, just to bring to your attention. I, first of all, I, we're here every Sunday. Uh, if you've just discovered this video, either on YouTube or on Facebook, welcome. It's great to have you with us, but we're here every Sunday. Um, th these videos go live uh, early on a Sunday morning, so you can watch it any time uh, during the day on Sunday, and then they stay, they stay available. So it doesn't matter when you want to watch it, you can watch it and you can join in our worship both on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, while you're here, go ahead, uh, like, follow, subscribe, uh, uh, click on the bell for notifications, all of these things so you can be kept up to date with everything that's going on in the life of the Pluckerman Presbyterian Church. Uh, also, we, we do have a website. There's a couple of links that are in the description that will point you to the website. Uh, one of them is to our prayer wall. It's a place where you can go. Uh, you can write down some of your joys, some of your concerns, and there are people who will be praying for you. Uh, also, uh, you can pray for the people who have written the requests there. So please feel very free to go to our, uh, our website and use that prayer wall. Also, you'll find a link to our Give Now page. And many of you are continuing to faithfully support the work of the church and to help us support our mission partners. I, I, I would encourage you to continue to do that. If you've not given to the, to the work of the church, I don't want you to feel any compulsion to do so, uh, but I do want to invite you to do that. Uh, follow that link. Uh, there are ways that we can uh, continue uh, to support one another in uh, works of ministry and we can continue to support our, uh, our mission partners at this particular uh, time. One, uh, uh, one thing that's, that's happening today, uh, you, you may or may not remember that it's the first Sunday of the month, it's August 2nd today, and we are going to be celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. So if you don't have any elements prepared, go ahead and pause the video. I, I, ideally, you can use some grape juice or some wine to celebrate, uh, to celebrate the sacrament and also any bread or crackers that you happen to have uh, in the house. The, it doesn't need to be anything particularly special. We use elements that are common uh, to our own culture. So whatever you have uh, in the house that would be appropriate for celebrating the sacrament, please feel very free to gather those things now. You can pause the video and we'll still be here when you come back. Um, I, I, I also want to remind you that I, 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 for those of you that are, that are uh, local, uh, next Sunday, that's August the 9th, we have, uh, uh, we're, we're going to be gathering together at 8.45 outside the church. It's going to be a type of worship, uh, not what we've, how we've worshipped even online, not how we worship physically together. It's going to be a different type of experience. But if you're local to the church, I want to invite you to come to that. A couple of things to prepare for that, though, uh, just, just so you're aware. First of all, uh, there is a link in the description. You will need to register. We need to know who is coming. Uh, largely, that's uh, in order to facilitate any contact tracing. If there is any issue, um, we need to know who is there and we need to be able to report who was there so we can follow up with people as well. So you do need to register your own name and the names of any people that are going to be in your group. You'll find that link in the description. Also, you need to wear a mask. Um, you will not be allowed to come in if you're not wearing a mask. I get, when I say in, into our, into our area where we're worshiping, please, please wear a mask because I do want us all to be safe and I do want us to be able to get together safely. Uh, uh, also, you need to keep six feet apart. You need to, um, for those outside your own group, uh, we do need to be social distancing. And also, please bring your own chair. Uh, that just makes things so much more straightforward if we all have our own lawn chairs in order to be able to, to, to worship uh, and to gather together. 
Um, also on that particular day, uh, there's a mission partner that has been getting the short end of the stick uh, from us over the, over the past few months. Uh, we, we, uh, uh, when we have gathered together physically for worship, we support a, a, a ministry through something called Sensibility. Uh, it's a mission, uh, it's, it's a mission uh, organization uh, based in Malawi, uh, in Central Africa. Uh, we actually support uh, or help to support a couple of uh, uh, schools for the deaf that are supported through the, the Presbyterian Church. Uh, each month, we collect money uh, uh, during our worship service, and we've not been doing that as we've worshipped online. But on August 9th, when we get together, uh, we will have the opportunity uh, to, to give towards a regular offering, but also we'll have the opportunity to give towards sensibility. Some folks have soup cans that I know are full and overflowing with money. Um, and I will take some time to explain this just a little bit later uh, in another video as, as we talk a wee bit more about sensibility. But you will find, if you go to the Give Now page, you'll also find that now there's a, there's a, there's a, a link in the drop down where you can select sensibility to be able to give towards uh, the schools for the deaf in Malawi. Uh, we also, one other thing, this is not just for local people, but this is for everybody. Um, whether you're part of the online community or the physical community, uh, we have a brand new Facebook group that we started up just a few days ago called My COVID Life. And on that particular group, uh, it's, it's a place to foster uh, conversation, just to talk about how things have been going uh, over, the, over the past few months. Uh, every one of us has a story to tell. Uh, every one of us has had a different experience with COVID. And this is a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to share our stories. You can write your story. Uh, there are some questions just as prompts to help you think through how you would like to answer, uh, how you'd like to tell your story. You can also make a short video. Uh, uh, some folks have done that. I'm also interviewing some people and some of those videos are going to be going live uh, over the next couple of weeks. So, so follow the link and take a look at My COVID Life and uh, join that particular group. And we'll continue the conversation. So now, friends, let's continue in the worship of God.
Today's scripture lesson is taken from Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 29. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In Pluckerman, where our church building is, there are a number of pretty good eating places. Um, of, of all the restaurants that there are in the area, there are, there are two that I, uh, let's say, regularly frequent, uh, that I happen to favour more than the others. There's nothing wrong with any of the others. I just happen to like these particular two. One of them is directly across the street from the sanctuary. Um, it's an Italian restaurant called uh, Luna Rosa. Uh, that's where I typically go to get myself a, a slice of pizza. But if I want a good sandwich, which I really enjoy, if I want a good sandwich, my eatery of choice is Annie's Deli. It's just around the corner, uh, right behind the liquor store on Burnt Mills Road in that corner. I've been there often enough for them to know what my regular sandwich is as soon as I walk through the door. Now, I'll happily eat on my own. I have absolutely no issue with that whatsoever. But, but I especially enjoy getting together with others at a, at a restaurant or in my study over a sandwich. Even in, in, in the late part of the afternoon or, or of the evening over a glass of wine or, or, or beer. Eating and drinking together is, is a very, very real way that I connect with people and that, and this is not just about me, that people have connected with each other uh, over the millennia. Think, think about I, I, how some of the most important moments in life are celebrated with food, and with, 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 with drink. The meal after a wedding service, the repast uh, after a memorial or funeral service, uh, christening, and birthday cakes. One of the things in the, in the local congregation at Pluckerman is whenever we have a celebration, whenever we have any type of celebration, we always have a cake. Now, in all those uh, situations, food points towards something far greater than itself. It's not just about the meal. It's not just about the food. Food marking a moment, okay? But more than just a moment. Food marking a moment in a relationship that's, that's changed in some way as that food is shared. Now, that's been something that, that I have missed, and I'm sure others have missed as well, having the opportunity to, to have a good meal with, with other people. Talking over a meal, enjoying a drink with another person, growing together as we, as we break bread with each other. In fact, I wonder, did you know that the root of the word company or companion literally means those with whom you share bread? I went to listen to these words from Henri Nouan. Uh, he was a, 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 a writer, a, a Christian mystic, uh, who died just a few years ago. Um, he wrote a, a, a number of books that speak about the presence of Christ, the importance of, of relationships within the, within the Christian community. And this comes from one of his books. He writes this, A meal together is one of the most intimate, and sacred human events. Around the table we become vulnerable, filling one another's plates and cups and encouraging one another to eat and to drink. Much more happens at a meal than satisfying hunger and quenching thirst. 
around the table we become friends, we become family, we become community. Yes, we become a body. If you take a look at the immediate context and even in the rest of Paul's correspondence with the Corinthians, one of the things that you'll notice is that there are a group of people who, although they're gathering together, they've forsaken the reason for their gathering together. They meet for worship regularly, but it's become a, it's become a type of, of performance. Each person trying to outdo the other in the gifts and in the talents that they have, vying for, for positions of power, positions of importance within the, within the Christian community. It even happened when they were celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Now, that aspect of worship seems to have been done uh, in the context of a, of a community meal, maybe a wee bit differently from how we typically celebrate the sacrament, where everyone brought a dish, as it, as it were. It seems to have been a way that the community was supposed to be caring for one another and helping to provide for each other and, 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 and to grow closer to each other. But there were those who were bringing lavish dishes uh, extravagant types of food and they were keeping it for themselves or, or were sharing it only with those whom they, who they liked, those who were like them and those who were less privileged were going hungry. Now rather than the Lord's table being a place where the body was being bound back together and community was being fostered in, in this particular community, it was becoming a place where, where power was being celebrated. And those, um, uh, those who had were being lifted up. And those who had not were being left to fend for themselves. Now this is part of what Paul means when he's talking about recognizing the body of Christ. If you're together as the body of Christ and you have something that others don't have, then rather than clinging to it and lording it over them, Christians have the responsibility to share what they have with each other. That's highlighted. Isn't it at the beginning of the book of Acts when we're, we're told that the Christians had everything in common and they shared with all those according to their need. So, so the pinnacle of this highlight of, of the community gathering, the place where the body of Christ was recognized most clearly was around the table of the Lord. This was where the community of Christians became the body of Christ. Because gathered around the table, they were, they were not simply isolated individuals, but they were members of a body, the body of Christ, with Christ as their head. The sacrament bound them together in a way that nothing else did, because it made them one with their Lord, and it made them one with each other. That was why it was such a travesty for the Christians in, in, in Corinth to be neglecting each other in this particular way. Now, when I was an associate pastor at First Presbyterian Church in, in Fayetteville, down in North Carolina, we had a conference one year where we invited Mark Achtemeyer to come and speak. During one of the seminars, he spoke about the nature of, of the Lord's Supper, and he talked about it in, in these terms. He's, he, he said something like, it's, it's significant that, that we use the word remember when we talk about the sacrament. Remember the body of Christ. And this only really works, I think, in the English language. We are, each one of us, members of the body of Christ. And as each one of us is distinct and separate from the other. But when we celebrate the sacrament, we're in a very, very real way remembering the body of Christ. The members are brought back together. Remembered. Now, during this period of covid this concept of being remembered as the body of Christ, recognizing the nature of our community is absolutely vital. Because of isolation, people are feeling the loss of community. People are feeling far from each other. They're feeling far from God. There's a rise in emotional and mental health issues. There are some are resorting to alcohol and to drugs. Others tragically are choosing to take their lives. Now, it took me a whole... A, it took me a whole lot of time uh, to, to, to come to the place of recognizing that online community is a real community. When we think about online community, I'm going to challenge you to stop using the word virtual. 
Because in the minds of many of you, virtual means not really real. It's less than real. It's somewhat real, but not quite. When it comes to community, uh, when, it, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to community, online relationships are just as real as physical relationships. In fact, there's a word that was coined uh, to describe the current generation who spend as much time online as they do uh, in physical community. The word is fidgetal. Now, that doesn't mean they can't sit still. Some of you may think that they can't sit still, but that's entirely beside the point. The word fidgetal, it's spelled P-H-Y-G-I-T-A-L, fidgetal. It's a blend of, of the words physical and digital. That, that physical and, and digital community can be and are just as real as each other. There's, there's no real value placed on one over the other. And that's something that over the last few months we ought to have been learning and discovering. I know, I know that some are so ingrained in the way that things have always been that you've neglected being part of the community in these ways that I know are very new to you. They're new to me as well. I want to challenge you to look beyond your own reality, your own experience of reality, and see the ways that the body of Christ is being remembered right now. And your part in that. And that doesn't mean that we should neglect one at the expense of the other. The word fidgetal says that both are important. For now, though, in this time, the body of Christ is being remembered in this particular way. As we prepare ourselves to gather around the Lord's table, recognize that as far apart as we, we may be from each other, both physically and, 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 and for some of us, we're far apart in time. I'm video recording this on a particular day. And you're watching this whenever you're watching this. So we're not only separated by distance, we're separated by time. And regardless of that, we are being remembered as the body of Christ. We're being brought back together. We are one body around all these different tables. These tables are made one. Friends, we are the body of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, friends, wherever you are and whenever you are, we are gathered together around the Lord's table. It was the Lord Jesus Christ uh, who invites us to gather together to celebrate this meal with one another and with him in his name. He's promised that where his people are gathered together, he is in the midst of them. And he is in our midst, even as we gather in this manner. He is with us. 
Let's pray together. And dear Lord, we give you thanks that you have called us to, to be remembered as your body. We're gathered together as the body of Christ. So dear Lord, as we spend this time together, may we know your presence in our midst. We ask that you would send your Holy Spirit down upon each one of us, that you may give us the eyes of faith, that you may bind us together as your body. We ask that these uh, elements of, of bread and wine may draw us closer to one another and may draw us closer to you, that the bread that we break may become for us in faith the communion of the body of Christ and the cup that we share may be our communion in the blood of Christ. And so as we participate and partake of these elements, may we know Christ in all his fullness and may we be bound together. Now hear us as we pray, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's the Lord Jesus Christ himself who invites us to gather around this table. The Lord Jesus who on the night when he was betrayed took bread and after he had given thanks to his Father in heaven, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said to them, Take and eat. This is my body. It's broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks to his Father in heaven. He gave the cup to his disciples and said to them, This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. It's poured out that the sins of many might be forgiven. The bread and the wine, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken and shed for you and for me. These are God's gifts for God's people. We are God's people. Let's worship him together. The body of Christ broken for you. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Let us pray. O gracious Lord, we give you thanks for these, your gifts of, of bread and wine. We thank you that they bind us to your Son and they bind us to each other. O Lord, we ask that wherever we are, whenever we are, that we may know that we are yours and in being yours, may we know that we belong to one another and that we are remembered as your body. So wherever we may go from this moment, we ask that we may know your continued presence with us and that as we have feasted on your body and as we have partaken of your blood, as we have been filled with the fullness of Christ, May it be that others see your Son in us and may they come to know him through us. Now hear us as we pray, for we pray in your Son's most precious name. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain in your hearts forever. Amen.